All right, guys, so I'm going to break down this scene here and basically show you guys how I did this. Now, I'm not going to go through the tracking process because I have a couple of videos already on how to do tracking, especially vertical videos. So definitely take a look at the gum row. I got stuff there and plus on my YouTube channel. Really here, this first of all, there's rigid body sim. I did this in a separate file. I'll show you guys a link to the video that I actually learned how to do this rigid body. And then what I did is I exported that out as an Olympic file and bring it back in here so it can play in real time, you know, close to real time. I got 23 frames, exported it and bring it in as an Olympic file. And then here you can see my tracking markers here down on the ground from my camera, which I use for reference to even build this pole here because I wanted to have some elements pass behind it and that helps helps out just to you know immerse the effect inside you know that you got some 3d going on and then I put all these other elements here some other elements that come into the foreground of the shot like this this dumpster here just again trying to add some more depth into the scene I had a couple of other you know CG elements here on the background here on the floor again just trying to really help set this whole scene up as far as the passes go this is going to be the main crucial thing okay first of all in my render settings I go to alpha channel make sure alpha channel is checked Okay, this is so basically uh, the background will be you can see the video. Okay, it's the same thing as doing a transparent background. Now we do see the video. If we go to the camera here and I click on the camera to background images. And then here I loaded in the background plate as a movie clip. And there it is while the uh, opacity is set to 100%. And that's how I'm able to get the background here. You notice we do not see my plane because my plane is a shadow catcher and it's very easy to set that up we go into the shading tab here and if i click on here's the material that i actually have on my ground plane i have a diffuse material then i actually took this rgb image but first of all let's not oh actually you know what i did a camera projection on this sorry i didn't use the shadow catcher so what i'm doing first here i have a diffuse material with an rgb image i loaded in my video sequence here and then into the projection of that RGB image, I added in a camera data node. And this is going to allow me to project the video onto the plane. So you can see here, I'm using Octane front camera projection, basically doing a camera projection. I'm projecting the image onto that plane. And this is how you set that up. All right, so that is my ground plane there. And then I also have another plane here off to the side, this wall plane here. And you can you can barely see you can't even really see it here and again on that it's the same thing repeated it's just this it's actually the same thing i just duplicated and put it up here onto the side again so i can have that also being projected and the reason why i'm doing the projection is so the colors of these ground planes and stuff will be projected onto these images so like this if i was to have this as a white ground plane this white color will be spilling onto this this again is just to help you know, immerse our 3D objects into the scene here by uh, projecting these colors and all the shadows and stuff, not necessarily shadows, but mainly the color is being reflected onto these uh, CG objects here. Now, again, all my trash elements were a trash add on um, I found on the Blender Mark. It's very cool. I really loved it and enjoyed it. So I bought it now to set up the render passes, because like we're not when I go to render, we're not going to see all of these elements here. So what we need to do is set up our render IDs first. So first thing I click on the ground plane because I don't want that to be shown in my render. If you click on this over here to the right, this little uh, brown, I always, I don't know, this object tab, right? Object practice. It's going to bring us into this tab and this tab may be closed or I might not be. I think it's open. But anyways, render ID layer, render layers. Okay, this is where back here up in the top in Blender, we would set up our our render layers here foreground and background we don't need to do any of that all i need to do is give it a render layer id so what i did is give this plane a render layer id of two and then from there same thing on my side plane it's going to have the same one it's going to have a render id of two and this pole also is going to have a render layer of two id of two they're not going to show up now if i click on this dumpster this dumpster you notice it has a render layer of one it's not the same same with this object here all of these objects have a render layer of one so anything that I don't want to show in the render has a rare layer ID of two things that I want to show have a render layer ID of one. What we need to do is set up our passes. If I go to, to our, our views, actually our render views, I go to render view passes, view layers, and then I'm going to go to octane render layers, view layers. 
make sure this is checked and then I turn it to two to make sure this is set to normal and then what I did is I also inverted the select so if I first of all if it's going to be like this it's going to be the two if I go ahead and render it real, really fast let me show you what it's going to look like all right everything that has a render id of one will not show so I gave all of these guys a render layer of two and that's what we can see here they're all showing up what I do from here is I just basically click on invert because I don't want these to be seen I want this stuff to be seen so let's just invert our selection boom now all of that stuff is not going to be rendered and all of this stuff will be rendered but we want the shadows anything that's being shadows reflection i do want those from these unseen renders so the way we set that up is we're going to need to set up some aovs so what we're going to do is i'm going to go back over to the shader node so what i'm going to do is click on octane render aovs and you may not see this at first what you're going to need to do is add it in so for example i just click on here add quick node tree okay and this is what we're going to see let's make this full screen and now what i want to do is i want to set the passes that i'm going to want to render out so what i typically do is i just come in here and i'll click on aov1 I go to render octane and then i go down to render layers i want black layered shadows then i want to click on uh, layer refractions or reflections this is if you want to have the reflections if you got something that's glossy or shiny this is where you will click on that and three i can come here and go to render layer layers shadow now these are the basic three here obviously this renders out our layers renders out the reflection that's going to be reflected on that again it has to be a glossy material or some type of speckle material to show that it's not going to have refract re reflections on a diffuse material then we got black layered shadows and then we got layered shadows you might think well what's the difference let me quickly show you what the difference is so we got layered shadows and we got black layered shadows the layer shadows basically combine black shadow and there is color inside of the rgb and if you use this one here you're going to need to do a little bit of math you're gonna have to multiply this to your background here when you're doing compositing I typically use the black shadows. The black shadows captures black shadows and it's already set up into a normal blend mode. So I don't need to do any math. The shadow is basically like a PNG with the black layered shadows. That's one I typically use. And then if you got any ref uh, reflections here, you want to use the layer reflections. And I think you need to multiply that to your background so you can see your reflections on it. So back over here. Now what I did was once I've had this set up, I'm gonna go ahead and name it anything different so you'll know where it is. So I just went off render, okay? So we'll jump out of here because now we need to set up our AOVs for our render for when we go to composite. Like you can clearly see here, I have this, I have all the options right here. Look, layered shadows, black shadows, uh, reflection layers. To get these to show up here, we need to turn it on. So again, if we jump back over here to our view layers and on our view layers, we have this tab right here, we'll say, render AOV node graph okay I'll click on that and then it'll say render an AOV node graph and then if you click inside of here and go to the one that you have named so this is the one up oh, there it is October render I'll go ahead and select that now I haven't done a render so we're not seeing anything yet so let me quickly do a quick render here so we can see it all right so I rendered it out here quickly now we can clearly see look we're seeing our video because I have my video here here's my video and I got my video basically converting this color space because I'm using Octane and Octane. If I didn't have this, this is what we see. Our background doesn't look right because in Octane, our color space needs to be set to raw. And of course, the video was shot in Rec 709, which is not it's not raw. Here is raw. In order to get our video to look correct, well, most people will just switch this here and go, oh, well, let me just switch this back to standard mode. But now look at our CG, our CG is totally blown out and the video looks correct. So what we do is keep it in raw. And what we need to do is change our video color space. We use a convert color space inside of uh, Blender here. And then I just go from linear to sRGB and now it looks correct here. Then I got my undistortion node that I got from my tracking. And the reason why I like to do this, the, the scene setup because I get this distortion note so I can re-distort my footage once it's done. Now you see it says distort. Up here it says undistort, right? Now if we look here, we got our shadow. Look at it, look, look at this. We got the shadows here. And again, this first one we're looking at is the, if I just click on here, it'd be a little easier. Okay, here is our image. 
that's our regular image and again these are not multiplied that's why it looks the edges look crappy this is the proper way that this is the proper workflow you don't want this edge to be multiplied yet you want it to be unmultiplied and then when inside my compositing program i will multiply them or for example in right here convert pre multiply that basically going to take that edge and make it look clean again but this is the proper workflow right this is the advantages of using octane so we got the image and then we got also our alpha channel which is great we got our beauty channel which is the same thing as the image but this is just the beauty that's coming from octane and then we got layered shadows okay here's our layered shadows they're on a white background they're they're black in order to use this pass we're going to need to do some math you're going to have to add in a math node and do a multiply multiply this to the background then i got my other pass here my black layered shadows and this is the one i use because i don't need to do a multiplication i don't have to do any math literally it's a png I just drag this on top of my footage and there's my shadows, right? Less math, why do it? And then also we got our last player here, layered reflections. And here are the reflections. Again, this is dirt. So I didn't use this pass because it really wouldn't be necessary. Unlike if this was a shiny floor, I would want these passes, right? So I can, again, you're gonna have to do some math on top of this when you apply this, okay? And then again, they're going through my distortion node so I can also like distort, put the camera distortion back on. So from there, what I do is I export it out into files right here. Here's my individual files. And in this case, I just did PNGs, but most of the time I do EXR so I can maintain as much data as possible. But I was just doing a test, so I did PNGs here. So I got each pass being rendered separately. I got my my layers, my black shadow and my, my white shadows, okay? I ended up only using the black shadows, but this, this setup was just to show you guys how if you wanted to do your multiple passes and then that was pretty much it all i ended up rendering out of this whole thing was these passes because i've already had my background pass i've already had my my background video because i exported that when i did the tracking and then i take all of these three passes here and re build them inside of davinci resolve and then i also do take my uh sorry i also did take out the the beauty pass okay so you can have the beauty pass and if you need to take out your your alpha you can do that but png already has the alpha built into it that's pretty much how we would get this pass and set this up and then we would just start to do our compositing get your black levels to match and get all that stuff going to quickly summarize this whole process up again really fast we'll come into our scene find the objects that you guys want to have the shadows on give them a render id anything but one and then once we do that we go to view layer view layer properties then we go and turn on render octane view layers set it to two and then invert it because remember if you don't invert it these are going to show up and the the cg elements that i want to be in are going to be blacked out so invert it by hitting the invert button and then we'll have just our cg stuff left then to get our shadow passes out or whatever passes you want we need to set up our render aovs come in here make sure we're on render aovs and then go here and select your aov or if you don't have one selected yet You'll come into your shader tab and then you will go over here and go to render AOVs and then press quick tree and then you go AOVs. I want what you select your passes. Here are all the passes. These are all the passes. There's so many passes. That's why I choose Octane over cycles because this is industry standard stuff here. For this quick, easy render here, all I need are just shadows basically. So go to render layer, then you select your shadow. Okay, we want we want layered shadows there it is okay so boom that's all set up then i need to come back over to render view layer make sure that it's october render that's the one i named good jump over to compositing tab make sure they're showing up on your render layers and once you got them here then you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do export them out comp them inside of here export out individual files like i did and then recomplement something else like davinci resolve i hope this helps you guys out i'm going to have more videos breaking down the whole workflow again i do have other videos right now on my gumro which work through vfx from tracking all the way to compositing not using uh, octane but using cycles and it's pretty much the same workflow except it's actually a little bit easier in octane i'm working on the octane render video uh tracking video it'll be out shortly but I hope this helps you guys out.